But majority of these children, about 85% of them, do not fit into any diagnostic label. They have a little bit of autism, a bit of ADHD, a bit of dyslexia, a bit of oppositional defiant disorder, a bit of something else. None of it fits into any diagnosis. Because our diagnostic labels are purely descriptive boxes. They don't mean anything. The real disorder is gaps. A different children from that disorder develop different group of symptoms, which may fit into a diagnostic label or not. And problem is, with these children, doctors procrastinate. They tell the parents to bring the child for observation six months later, and six months later, and precious time is being wasted when the child could have been helped. Remember, the younger the child is, the quicker they will recover, and the more fully they will recover. So I tell parents, parents know something's wrong with their child. They don't need a doctor to tell them that. If you know something's wrong, start the protocol. Don't wait for a diagnosis. In a few weeks' time, there will be no need for any diagnosis. The child will take off and will start developing. When the brain accumulates too much toxicity and it perceives that toxins as physically damaging to its structure, in a proportion of these children, the brain develops a cleansing procedure. It sends one electric discharge through and cleanses, cleans the whole lot of toxins out. And that is an epileptic seizure. Epilepsy is a safety valve for the brain. It is a cleansing procedure for the brain. The last thing these children need is another toxin added to the equation in the form of anti-epileptic medication. Because all anti-epileptic medications, one of their major side effects is epileptic seizures. They cause seizures, epileptic medications. There is a small proportion of children who have very dangerous forms of epilepsy, when the child can die, they have to go on medication. But vast majority of children are not in that group, more than 90%. They had one seizure, and then they have known for many months. And yet these children are put on medication. I have lost count of loving parents who call their child a zombie because of anti-epileptic medication. The child's personality goes, it's a different person, they become couch potatoes, and they can't learn. They develop learning disability as a result of the medication. My dream is that one day our doctors will be putting them on the GAPS diet instead of on medication, these children, first and foremost. And in a large percent of them, the seizure will never happen again. When these children grow up, unless they were treated properly, they become GAPS adults. And the first thing that happens to these teenagers is substance abuse, because they have a physical reason for this. I believe that we human beings are born to be happy. How do we reach the state of complete happiness? Complete joie de vivre, as French say. By our brain receiving a fountain of serotonin, dopamine, norepinephrine, endorphins, and other neurotransmitters. The brain uses these chemicals for various functions. The more we study them, the more we realize that they actually produced in the digestive system. Almost 100% of serotonin is produced in the gut. About 75% of dopamine is produced in the gut. And then these substances are transported to the brain to be used. Gaps, people have abnormal digestive system, unhealthy digestive system. It doesn't produce enough serotonin. It doesn't produce enough dopamine. Sometimes produces almost none. So these children were depressed. What is depression? Clinical depression. Not enough serotonin, not enough dopamine. That is what depression is. So these children grew up being depressed most of their life. Morphine, heroin, cannabis, sniffing glue, Dangerous, reckless behaviors, unsafe sex, and other stressful things like that, they can produce that fountain for a few minutes for the brain. For the first time in their life, these children realize that's what life is about. And they want it again. And who can blame them? And that's how they become drug addicts. 
That is where addiction comes. In order to help these children, we need to heal their gut. That's where we have to start. We need to heal their gut. So it starts producing enough serotonin, enough dopamine, enough of other neurotransmitters. Only then this person will be able to come off the drugs. So that's a long, long healing period for these people usually. Depression, not enough serotonin, not enough dopamine. Every depressed person has to start from healing their gut. Problem is, when we ask them, many of them tell me, my gut is fine. No diarrhea, no constipation, no pain, no gas, nothing, I'm all right. But then when we do the test of their gut flora, we find that it's abnormal. Why is that? We're all born with different constitution, and some of us have stronger points in the constitution, weaker points in the constitution. If your digestive system, your stronger point in your constitution, it can compensate for a very long time. Lots of abnormalities going on in there. You'll have no symptoms. A human person, a human body can have cancer for 20 years and not know about it. There will be no symptoms. The body works around it, it compensates. So despite the fact that there are no digestive symptoms, these people still have to start from their digestive system. And when they start healing, they realize that indeed that's where it all began. Eating disorders, I have a chapter on this subject in my book, which covers it very well. Anorexia, bulimia, and other eating disorders which are becoming very common in our modern world. Obsessive-compulsive disorder, manic-depressive disorder, and the king of them all, schizophrenia. Schizophrenia is that waste basket where psychiatrists put all the patients who don't fit into any other diagnostic labels. That's why all schizophrenics are very different. And these people are extremely ill physically. Their tummy hurts, they have headaches, they have migraines, their joints are hurting, they have arthritis. Their muscles are all hurting, they have fibromyalgia, they have chronic cystitis, they have all sorts of problems, these people. So you have to treat the whole body, you have to heal the whole person in these people. And they have to stay, these people have to stay on the GAPS nutritional protocol for the rest of their lives. Epilepsy in adults has the same cause as in children. We have about 15-20% of adults who have a scar on the brain, they had a car accident, they had trauma, an aneurysm burst, or they had a tumor removed, or they had a stroke. And this scar on the brain can produce epileptic seizures. But I find that even in this group of patients, the seizures either stop or reduce in severity or reduce in frequency when they go on the GAPS nutritional protocol. Because we subtract a huge amount of toxicity. You have to understand that more than 90% of all toxins floating in your blood come from the digestive system. Make no mistake, that is the center, that is the major source of any toxic in your body. Once you fix that bit, the body can deal with the rest. Gut and physiology syndrome, that is the rest of the body. All digestive disorders are GAPS conditions, all of them. In fact, you cannot develop a digestive disorder without damaging your gut flora first. You can never develop cancer in your digestive system unless you damage your gut flora first. Because the healthy gut flora will not allow anything to happen in your digestive system. Unfortunately, vast majority of people in the Western world have abnormal gut flora. What happens in uh, irritable bowel syndrome, IBS is a very common condition, in fact, about a third of all patients coming to family doctors in Britain are people with this condition. Extremely common. Needs to be renamed gut dysbiosis. That's what, that should be the name for it. Inflammatory bowel disorder, that is Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis, pouchitis and some other less common disorders. What happens here? Toxicity accumulates in the wall of the digestive system. Toxins from the abnormal flora. Toxins like to attach themselves to proteins in the human body. They attach themselves to the molecules of proteins. And that changes the three-dimensional structure of that protein. 
Your immune system goes around the body surveying it all the time. When it finds that changed protein in the gut wall, looks at it and says, oh, you're not mine. You must be a virus. I don't recognize you. Who are you? And first, it will use a non-specific response, quick, immediate response, and that is inflammation. First, it will cause inflammation in the gut wall, which hurts, which is painful, can cause abnormal stool and various other symptoms. If that situation continues for a couple of months, the immune system will have enough time to develop antibodies against these changed proteins in the gut wall. And bingo, we have an autoimmune disease against your own digestive system. Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis, celiac disease are autoimmune conditions of the digestive system. That is the mechanism how they develop. In order to heal them, we need to change the gut flora. We need to heal and seal the gut wall in the person. I have a large group of people with ulcerative colitis, Crohn's disease, celiac disease, who fully recovered. They're curable, all of them. Our mainstream medicine is in the business of controlling symptoms, not in the business of curing anything. That is why they believe that these diseases are incurable. They are curable. But we have to work with nature, not with drugs. Autoimmunity. All autoimmunity is born in the gut. Every autoimmune disease is a digestive disorder, whether it is rheumatoid arthritis or lupus or psoriasis or multiple sclerosis or amyotrophic lateral sclerosis or anything else. Our major uh, immunologists in the world now are confirming this fact in the last few years. Any autoimmune disease, if you've been diagnosed with any autoimmune disease, whether you have digestive symptoms or not, go to your gut. Focus on healing that. Focus on normalizing your gut flora. And you will change the very basis of your immune function in the body, and the immune system will start working properly in the body. Arthritis is of many kinds. What is arthritis? Inflammation in the uh, joint. Remember I said that toxins from the gut attach themselves to protein molecules? About a third of all protein in your body is collagen. It is a wonderful elastic protein that holds our bodies together, gives us rigidity and, and gives us structure. Problem is, collagen has many receptors on it which are popular for many popular toxins from the gut. They come and they attach themselves to this collagen and they change its three-dimensional structure. So the immune system finds it and attacks it. Your joints are almost pure collagen. All the ligaments around, the capsule, the liquid inside, almost pure collagen. That, that is the cause of all arthritis. Remove toxicity from the body, starting from the gut, your arthritis will disappear, no matter how chronic it is. Human body has a beautiful process called uh, cell regeneration, where all cells in the body live a short life, and then they die and get replaced by newly born cells. Every three months you have a new liver. Your liver changes itself. Every seven years we have a new skeleton, completely new bones in our bodies. So if you stop damaging your joints, all the sick cells will be shed off, removed, replaced with healthy cells, and your arthritis will be gone. ME for fibromyalgia, chronic uh, fatigue syndrome. I haven't got time to stop on it um, for a long time. But these people cannot produce enough energy. Their mitochondria in the body are shut down because of the level of toxicity that accumulates in the body. We have to remove toxins first, then the person will get their energy back. Allergies, asthma, eczema, hay fever. Our immune system has many arms. But the major two ones that we know of is Th1 and Th2. And this arm is responsible for normal reactions to pollen, to food, to chemicals, to cats and dogs, to horses, to anything, in the, to dust mites, anything in the environment. Problem is, this arm is kept up to its jobs and strong by the gut flora. When the gut flora is abnormal, this arm becomes disabled. 
So the second arm, TH2, tries to compensate for its disabled brother, and it tries to deal with pollen and dust mites and cats and dogs and food and chemicals, but it uses wrong tools. And as a result, you become atopic. You start developing hay fever, reacting to pollen, asthma, reacting to dust mites, allergies to your beloved cat or your beloved dog, to chemicals, to foods, and the list just grows on. In order to get rid of this situation, we need to focus on the gut flora. Heal your gut flora, and this arm will get off the floor. Once you've rebalanced them, hay fever stops, asthma disappears. You're not allergic to your cat or dog anymore. I have many people in my clinic who can switch off and on their allergy to their cat, like this, by eating a particular food. If they don't eat that food, they can sleep with the cat right there on their face, and they're fine <laughs> at night. So allergies are curable, as long as you focus on the gut flora. Endocrine disorders. This is a very complex system of glands, and they're all high-fat tissues. They accumulate fat-soluble toxins, mercury, lead, aluminum, other toxic metals, formaldehydes, and many other small molecular weight and fat-soluble things. And that causes a disorder in that area. Majority of that toxicity comes out of the digestive system. So in order to deal with low thyroid function, adrenal dysfunction, and many other thyroid, other uh, endocrine conditions, it is the digestive system we have to start from. Migraines, neuropathy, other neurological conditions, again, our nervous system is a high-fat organ. It accumulates toxins. Chronic cystitis, bed wetting, and nephropathy. I'd like to stop for a moment on this. This river of toxicity coming into your body goes around, causes its damage, but then it has to leave the body somehow. And a lot of it is excreted from the body through urine. When this toxic urine full of chemicals accumulates in the bladder, it strips off the protective layers in the bladder, glucosaminoglucans, and causes chronic inflammation. Cystitis, chronic cystitis. Interstitial cystitis, it's called. Our mainstream doctors are not familiar with this condition. The person goes to the doctor, they look at urine, no infection. They say, well, I can't give you an antibiotic. You can't have a cystitis. And people who come to doctors repeatedly finish up being referred to a psychiatrist, put on psychiatric medication. This is a chemical cystitis. There is no infection. It is a chemical cystitis, and chemicals are coming out of the digestive system of the person. In order to get rid of this situation, we must heal the gut. Then the river of toxicity stops, urine cleans itself up, and chronic cystitis, bedwetting, and other problems in that area disappear. Food intolerances and f -pies. When the gut wall is damaged, porous and leaky, food doesn't get the chance to be digested properly before it absorbs. It absorbs undigested. Then the immune system finds this undigested food in the bloodstream, looks at it and says, you're not food, I don't recognize you as food, and attacks it. It attaches immune complexes, it becomes a very large molecule, and this attack can cause any symptom in the body you can think of. Can be a migraine, can be a panic attack, can be depression, can be joint pain, can be cystitis, can be nephropathy, can be anything in the body. This, this condition, f -pies, is another epidemic coming on to humanity, and that is happening to little babies who are breastfed, exclusively breastfed. Their gut wall is damaged to such a degree, they're absorbing everything from the mother's milk undigested. Vomiting, diarrhea, vomiting, diarrhea, the child is not putting weight on. Doctors do tests, find that the child is allergic to all protein on the planet. So doctors put them on soya formula, which is a poison, causes autism, too much manganese in it, and tell the parents, give them some boiled carrots, that's it. I have a group of these patients, of these babies who are recovering beautifully on meat stock, bone broth on a no-plant-gaps diet. They can recover these children, but we have to rebuild their gut wall. 
Most GAPS people have feeding problems. Majority of these children and adults are fussy eaters. It usually is a first sign of GAPS. It is a symptom of abnormal gut flora. If your child is fussy with food, your child has abnormal gut flora. It isn't normal for a child to be fussy with food. Why? Because these children have um, solid physiological reasons for this. More than 90% of children with learning disabilities have this problem. And they limit their food to sweet and starchy foods. They will eat bread, they will eat breakfast cereals, they will eat chocolates and sweet yogurts and banana maybe, but all the proper meals are excluded. What is happening in the child? The child is trapped in a vicious cycle of cravings and dependency for the very foods that harm them. When they eat bread, when they eat chocolates and biscuits and other sweet and starchy and potatoes, their pathogenic flora eats all that and converts it into many toxins. But these microbes are clever. They're very clever. Proportion of this toxicity they make in the form of endorphins, which when they come to the brain, they give a brain pleasure. So the brain wants more. These children are drug addicts. There's no other way of putting this. They are drug addicts. The drug is produced in their digestive system by their abnormal gut flora. In order to pull them out of this vicious cycle of drug addiction, parents have to work together. It is possible to do that. Thousands of children have done that. They have to work together. And I have a chapter in my book, which is called It's Feeding or No, where I describe how to do that. How to get your child out of that drug addiction. The drug is sugar. The drug is wheat. The drug are those biscuits and cakes and crackers that they're eating, and breakfast cereals that they're eating. That's a behavior modification technique. So the treatment of GAPS, how do we treat it? We treat it with a GAPS nutritional protocol, which is a program. The most important part of that program is the diet. Because it is a digestive disorders we're talking about. Your digestive system is a long tube. What you fill that tube with has direct effect on its well-being. So diet has to be the number one treatment. It is the most important treatment. I haven't got time to stop on it in detail, so I'll just flick through this. These are the foods we avoid because they are very difficult to digest. Human digestive system, in fact, has not been designed to digest them well, and we get virtually no useful nutrition from them. These are the recommended foods. That is what we're actually eating on the program. These are the foods that human digestive system can break down well, and they are the basis of building our human bodies. Our heavy brain, something happened. Our heavy liver, our heavy lungs, our heavy bones. These are the building foods for the human body. Meat and fish stock provide glucose aminoglycans, provide those sugars that Lucas was talking about, provides glucosamine, collagen in large amounts, gelatin and other things. And these substances happen to be is what the cells in your gut wall are made from. The cells that line your gut wall only live a few days. They get worn out, they die, and they get replaced by newly born cells. In order for your gut to give birth to all those babies, those baby cells, building materials are required to make these cells from. These foods provide all the necessary building materials for your gut wall to give birth to trillions of new cells. In, 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 in that way, it rebuilds itself. You're building a new gut wall for yourself, consuming these things. <clears throat> Fermented foods is something that human beings ate for all of our existence on the planet. They are not optional for human beings. You have sauerkraut in Germany, wonderful food. Make it at home, because commercial sauerkraut is not the same. Grow your own cabbages, make it at home. Why? Because for most of our existence on the planet, we didn't have refrigeration. And we didn't have supermarkets where you can buy everything. Food was seasonal. So when your cabbages grew in September, if you don't do something with them immediately, they will rot and you will be left without cabbage for the rest of the year. So what did people do? They fermented it. 
Fermented cabbage can last for five years without spoiling. All over the world, in all traditional cultures, people fermented meat, fish, milk, vegetables, fruit, grains, beans, anything can be fermented. And fermentation pre-digests the food for us, so it's easy for our digestive system to extract nutrients from there. And it provides large amounts of probiotic beneficial microbes. That is what you want to live in your digestive system. And they will push out, crowd out those pathogens. They will kill them, they will attack them, and they will push them out. They will restore your gut flora. If every one of you comes home and starts having a tablespoon of sauerkraut with your breakfast, lunch, and dinner, you won't need to spend money on expensive probiotics. You will get enough for your gut flora. Natural fats. We live in a world of fat phobia. I'll be talking more about this uh, this afternoon. I'm sure Lucas will talk about it as well. The only fat suitable for human physiology is animal fat. Vegetable oils, cooking oils are poisonous. Nobody should be eating them. Nobody should be cooking with them. When you roast a good joint of pork, collect the fat from it. Pour it into a glass jar. It will keep in the fridge for six months and do all your cooking on that fat. Goose fat, duck fat, beef fat, lamb fat, pork fat are the best fats of human physiology. They are the easiest fats for us to digest and they are the most nourishing and best fats for us. We'll cover the heart disease this afternoon. This is the book that I've written about heart disease because every time I was speaking to my patients about fats, they were all asking the same question. Am I going to die from a heart attack on your diet? <laughs> so having explained to a hundred patients that these fats have nothing to do with heart disease, I, better, I thought I better write a book about this. So this is the result where I explain all of this. This book is being translated into German and will come out hopefully in a few months in German language. Supplementation, we use absolute minimum supplements in the GAPS nutritional protocol because they have many ingredients which can damage the gut wall. You don't want to invest a lot into the diet and then spoil the whole thing with a pill that you paid a lot of money for. Detoxification is a very important part of the GAPS nutritional protocol. We live in a toxic world and we have been seduced to use a myriad of chemicals in our lives without which we can live perfectly well and which are all very, very toxic. We all have a so-called detox system in our bodies with the headquarters in the liver and departments in every cell. It's a cleaner in the body. Your body cleans itself all the time. And the majority of us in the modern world is working very hard, pedaling very, very hard behind. <clears throat> gut is the main source of toxicity in people with damaged gut flora, in GAPS people. We get rid of that source of toxicity with the GAPS nutritional protocol. The diet will heal and seal the gut wall and change the gut flora in the person. So that source of toxicity gets removed. While we're working on it, it doesn't make sense to add more toxins for your detox system to deal with. So we need to reduce the general toxic load. Number one thing that has to go for every GAPS person, all chemicals in the house. Your bathroom needs to be swept clean. All those colorful bottles need to be thrown away. Your laundry detergents, your dishwasher powders, your cleaning chemicals in the house, your lotions and potions, your makeup, your hair dyes, your shampoo, your creams, and so on. Chemical industry is self-regulated, which means it is not regulated. They have produced more than 80,000 chemicals to date which do not exist in nature. Our bodies are not programmed to deal with these chemicals. They don't know what to do with them. They absorb in seconds through our skin, through our mouth, everywhere and they finish up in the bloodstream and they avoid the liver. If you swallow a chemical, before it finishes up in your blood, it has to go through the liver and the liver will neutralize most of it. But if you put it on your skin, it's in your blood in seconds and it has avoided the liver. Personal care industry is a major cause of cancer epidemic in this world. Number one probably cause. Remove all these things. The rule is, if you can't eat it, you can't put it on your skin. Only edible things can be put on your skin. Olive oil and coconut oil are the best moisturizers for the face. Wash your hair with raw egg yolks. 
That's what we used to do in the Soviet Union when we had no shampoo. All ladies in the Soviet Union wash their hair with egg yolks, raw egg yolks. Works beautifully. Better than any shampoo, and it's natural. And detoxifies your scalp, detoxifies your hair. Brush your teeth with olive oil. Have a dish of olive oil in your bathroom. Dip the brush in it, brush. That is an Ayurvedic procedure from the ancient Indian medicine. It detoxifies the mouth, removes dental materials, removes toxicity stored in your gums and everywhere else. It will make your mouth healthy altogether if you brush your teeth without, instead of toothpaste, with an olive oil. The human body must not be washed with any chemicals at all. That is an anathema to human body. Your skin works very hard to produce oily secretions to create a habitat for your skin flora. Your skin is richly populated by its own flora. And this flora has to be healthy and balanced. And in order to be healthy and balanced, it needs a habitat. Every time you use a shower or a soap on your skin, you're washing the habitat off. You're damaging your skin flora. And you're leaving your skin open to invasion by pathogens and to drying out. That is a major cause of eczema, and psoriasis and all other skin conditions that people suffer from. Do not wash your body with any soaps. Just plain water is quite enough. That is very, very important. Juicing is an important part of uh, GAPS nutritional protocol. Juicing has been shown for the last hundred years to be one of the most effective things for removing all kinds of toxins out of the body. In order to remove one molecule of mercury safely out of your body without causing damage on the way, Shuttles have to be attached to that molecule. Proteins, amino acids, enzymes, minerals, vitamins. Only in that form, that molecule of mercury can safely leave your body without damaging you. Juice provides substances which will wash out mercury out of your brain, out of your fat tissues, because it's a fat-soluble stuff. And then it will provide all the shuttles to remove that molecule out of your body safely. A lot of chelation protocols on the planet just redeposit mercury somewhere else in your body because they do not provide enough shuttles for mercury to leave your body safely. We do baths with Epsom salt, sea salt, seaweed, and bicarbonate of soda every night. My patients have to take a bath every single night. These things pull toxins out into the water and contribute nutrition through the skin. Remember, our skin absorbs everything. It's a sponge. And you, in, in, in Europe, you know that there are traditional spas all over Europe where people bathe in mineral waters and other special waters and medicinal baths. That's what we're trying to basically copy with these baths at home. Sunbathing is absolutely essential. We live in a world of sun phobia. As other speakers were telling you, we are solidified light. Every time we sunbathe in the sun, we need the full spectrum of the sun, whether we see it or not. You are normalizing healing on the atomic level, on the molecular level in your body, on the level of tiny energies in every molecule, every atom. Vitamin D is a sunshine vitamin. Vast majority of Western population are severely deficient in this vitamin because people are afraid of the sun. Sun is a major source of this vitamin. We have to sunbathe to get it, because food provides actually very little of vitamin D. It's hard to get enough from food. We must be in the sun to get enough. Lots of other things the sunshine does for us. I haven't got time to stop on it, but just take it. The idea that sun causes cancer was proposed by some little dermatologist in America, of course. And you know who heard that idea? Chemical industry. They started producing their lotions and potions, and they educated our Western governments and the whole population that sun causes skin cancer. There is no proof that sun causes skin cancer. It does not. It prevents it and it heals it. What causes skin cancer, the same things that cause all other cancers, all the chemicals that we filled our bodies with, electromagnetic pollution and other pollution. As the detoxification system recovers in the person, toxic metals are removed naturally without chelation. I have family after family coming to me with autistic children, and the tests show that the child has lead and mercury and other heavy things in the body. I tell the parents, we do nothing about it for a year. We will work 
on restoring your child's detox system. Because in all these patients, the detox system is broken down. Because of the sheer level of toxicity coming from the gut into the liver, the detox system is broken down. It's not working. The person is accumulating toxins. Once the detox system recovers and starts working, it removes these things out in ways that our science hasn't even discovered yet. It's an extremely powerful system. In more than 85% of these children, when we retest a year later, metals are gone. And we did nothing about it. Lead is gone, mercury is gone. We didn't have to kill it. We didn't have to do anything about it. This is my book. As I say, it's been translated into 15 languages altogether. Russian translation has just come out, I'm happy to say. And the majority of the European languages are covered. And there is one here in German. This book hasn't been translated into other languages. I have been receiving letters from people from all over the world for years. People who haven't had any consultations with me or anybody else. They just bought the book, they followed the book, and they got the results. And these letters were so moving and so powerful, I published them as a book. I got permission of these people, and I published it as a book. And all kinds of conditions are covered there where people recovered from them. If you speak English, please read this book. It will give you inspiration. It will give you hope. From chronic fatigue, fibromyalgia, multiple sclerosis, all the mental illnesses, to narcolepsy, to alcoholism, people recovered with this protocol. Because all diseases begin in the gut. Once you put your digestive system right, once you put the soil in your digestive system right, your gut flora, all life on our planet begins from soil. Top soil is the, the beginning of all life. Our industrial agriculture is destroying it on, on enormous scales. The very beginning of life is being destroyed, the very basis of life. Our gut floor is the soil inside us, and the roots of your health are sitting in that soil. You are the plant, and your roots are in that soil. So once you take care of your soil, everything will grow well, and your body will be healthy. This is my website and my blog. Uh, yeah, I have been training health practitioners for the last several years, and uh, we have more than 1,000 certified GAPS practitioners around the world. So if you need to work with a practitioner, please go on my website. You will find somebody local to you. Many people work uh, via Skype and phone as well as in person. So these people will be able to help you to implement the protocol. Thank you very much for listening. <laughs>